morning. Special welcome to all of you. A special welcome to our guests and visitors this morning. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Pastor Mark Swanson, the, the new pastor here at St. Peter's in Helenville. And uh, the theme of our worship this morning is, uh, is the, the power of prayer. And as that video illustrated for us, uh, we really do have this power at our fingertips. But we'll see this morning that the power lies in the God who stands behind us. We'll follow the order of worship on page 15, and we'll begin with the opening hymn at 407. Son 
to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
one in a series from Colossians. And the, the focus of, of this particular lesson is the fact that we can trust in Jesus and we can pray to Jesus because of who He is, the fact that He is the very God that we <coughs> So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive, hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ, who is the head over every power and authority. In Him you were also circumcised in the putting off of the sinful nature. Not with the circumcision done by the hands of men, but with the circumcision done by Christ. Having been buried with Him in baptism and raised with Him through your faith in the power of God who raised Him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your sins, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. <coughs> then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread, because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
listens and answers our prayer. They're pretty popular these days. They're really useful for figuring out if you have no experience on a topic and figuring a little bit more about it. For $20 or $30, one of them can be yours, and you can get started on that hobby that you've always wanted. It's those popular how-to books. Chess for dummies. Auto repair for dummies. Income tax for dummies. They're very popular these days. They're very useful because they outline it in very simple steps and they explain the more difficult terms. And so it allows you to pick up on that hobby with very little experience and get something out of it. How should we pray? We know that we should. We say, yeah, I know I should pray more. Or when something happens, someone asks us, well, did you pray about it? And whether we can't find the right words, or we think, oh, I just don't have enough time, or I don't want to bother God, or I don't think this request is important enough. Sometimes we choose not to pray. We let those concerns get in the way. Maybe we need a copy of Christian Prayer for Dummies. It's a real book written by Richard Wagner. You can look it up when you make it home. How should we pray? Well, it turns out that this question was burning on the hearts of Jesus' disciples all those years ago. And so they asked him, they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. You see, John the Baptist, he taught his disciples how to pray. And Jesus' disciples noticed that Jesus was always praying all over the place, any situation. He was a prodigious prayer. And they figured if this was important enough for Jesus that maybe they should learn a little bit more about this prayer thing. Lord, teach us to pray. It's sort of like if you're at a new job and you notice that everyone that enters this one certain room, they always put on a hard hat first. Without faith, if they go in that room, they put on their hard hat. And, and after you see that day after day, you, you begin to wonder, you begin to question why. So you ask someone, why do you wear a hard hat when you go into that room? And, and you further ask, do I need to wear a hard hat if I go into that room? Well, that's sort of what was going through the disciples' minds when they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus responds with some of the most familiar words. With the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that He handed down to us. A prayer that's in just about every single church service and just about every single Christian knows. And there's a lot of meaning packed into this prayer. But we're not going to focus on all of the facets of the Lord's Prayer. Right because we could probably do a whole sermon series just on the Lord's Prayer and still not cover it. So we're just going to focus on a few things. First of all, it's brevity. It's not the longest prayer you've ever heard or ever prayed. And yet God manages to pack so much into these few short verses. And these even aren't all the petitions that we learned about in Catechism class. Also, it's simplicity. It, it doesn't cover every single facet of human life. But yet in these few short petitions, you get sin and repentance. You get physical needs. You get sanctification. And finally, you see that it is very, very spiritually focused. There's only one petition that focuses on physical needs, and all the rest are on spiritual needs. But I'm really glad that we have the next section in our lesson. Because this is a section that's so often overlooked because we focus so much on the Lord's Prayer and everything that we can get out of that, that we totally skip over this next section. But they're really linked, this section. And, and this section really helps to explain the Lord's Prayer. Suppose you have a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children are with me in bed. I can't give up and give you anything. 
I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, that because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. Now to properly understand this story, we need to know a little bit about hospitality in biblical times. You are supposed to be hospitable to a complete stranger. You see, they didn't just have hotels in every single corner of every single city. And if it was a friend who was coming to you for help, well then you just had to help them, even if it was an inconvenience. And notice how the friend didn't really want to help him, did he? He had every excuse in the book, it's late, I'm tired, I don't want to give up. And yet you notice that he still gives the man whatever he needs. Not because he is his friend, but because of the man's boldness. Another way of describing it would be the man's shamelessness. He was shameless in his asking. He didn't care that it was the middle of the night. He didn't care that it was an inconvenience. He just asked. And that's the way we can pray, too. We can pray boldly, shamelessly, recklessly to God. We can knock on His door in the middle of the night and ask Him for something. You see, the man didn't let his concerns get in the way. He could have thought, oh no, it's too late. It's too much of an inconvenience. I'm not going to trouble him. And if he had, he would have missed out. But he didn't. You see, here's the point. The man could have let his concerns drown out his asking and not even asked. But he didn't. And we have that same temptation in our lives as well. We can feel like, oh, I'm not going to bother God with my request. Ah, I'm not important enough for my request isn't important enough. But the man didn't let that keep in the way of his asking. And if you can have someone come up to his friend in the middle of the night and get everything that you need, even though he doesn't want to do it for you, then imagine when you ask God for something with how he promises to be there for us and to answer our prayers, you're going to get what you ask for. Because <clears throat> God doesn't get tired. God doesn't need to sleep. He doesn't have limited office hours. And he doesn't get cranky when you ask him. Even if you do it in the middle of the night. So I ask, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. So maybe you're like me and you immediately object to these words. Because you're thinking, wait a minute, Jesus. There's been plenty of times where I've asked for something and I haven't got it. Plenty of times where I've asked. And you haven't answered my prayers. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. But Jesus has an answer for that too. Did you catch it? Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. You see, parents get it that sometimes our kids don't know what's best for them, do they? See, sometimes what they want is actually very clearly bad for them. Like if your kid wants to touch that pretty orange stovetop, you have to stop them. You see, you have the knowledge and the experience and the perspective that they don't. And I think God feels that way about us sometimes. Oh, look, Jimmy's asking for a Ferrari again. Oh, Heather's asking for a million dollars again. And I think sometimes he just shakes his head because he knows so clearly what we need, even when we don't. But what about when it's not so clear? What about when you're racking your brain trying to figure out any way that God could possibly allow this to happen? 
you're standing in that hospital and the doctor tells you that this is your last night with your loved one, that you have to say your goodbyes. When you've been praying and praying, begging and pleading with God to just spare you from this loss. What about when you're watching that casket get lowered into the ground? Does God still know what's best? In times like that, it's so easy to doubt. It's so easy to despair. We want to just shake our fist at God, to put Him on trial, to blame Him. To say, God, I know you say that you care about us, but I'm not feeling it right now. Maybe it leads us to give up on prayer entirely. To think if that's the way that God's going to answer my prayers, then maybe I don't want to pray to Him. God, you so clearly don't listen to what I have to say anyway. see another element of prayer that's even more important than boldness is trust. You see, the storms will come. Your faith will be tested. And, and sometimes we're going to fall flat on our face. We're going to despair and we're going to blame God. But there's those times that we need to cling to Jesus' forgiveness all the more. Even though we may be tempted to doubt God's goodness and God's governance, let us never doubt His forgiveness. Where do we find the strength in those times where we're tempted to despair? We look to the cross. And when we look to the cross, we see something that also doesn't look very fair. We look to the cross and we see Jesus doing the impossible for us. We look to the cross and we see the sinless Son of God suffering for our wrongs. And that doesn't seem too fair. And we want to yell out to God, no, that isn't right either. God, how can you be good? How can you allow that to happen? God, how can you punish Jesus when it's my sins that disgust you? How can you punish Jesus when it's my sins that deserve to be there? See, without Good Friday, we can't have Easter Sunday. Without Jesus' death on Friday, we can't have His resurrection on Sunday. Without God punishing Jesus and exacting that suffering on Him, that's how He removes our suffering and our guilt. God is able to take the darkest day and turn it into His marvelous light. He's able to take this heart-wrenching scene and show the most beautiful act of love. And a God who did that for Jesus, a God who did that for us, is the same God that's listening to your prayers is the same God that's answering all of your prayers. No is an answer too. It's a valid one. It might not be the answer that we want. But when it comes from a God who did not spare His only Son, but graciously gave Him up for us, we know that we can trust the answer. So how should we pray? Pray boldly. Don't let anything get in the way of that direct access that you have with your Creator. And pray with trust. Because the God who sent Jesus for you is the same God who's working everything out according to His perfect will. My prayer for you this morning is that God gives you the courage and the strength Trust his answer. Amen. Please stand. May the peace which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.
I want to thank all the people that helped get the person in ready for her new pastor and his wife. A lot of work was put in on it, like boys, the danger, Jim, and uh, other people. Uh, that was a lot of work. And I want to thank everybody that participated in last the last two Sundays for the special potlucks and the special services. It was great. It, I mean, last Sunday was you know, really, really moving. Uh, any questions that you want to be brought up at the meeting? <laughs> Any questions? Uh, I, there's nothing really special coming up uh, that I can think of. If anybody else, uh, can think of. thank you.